but my I need to be able to double the business. And oh, another thing, my goal is to create route density. How should I be thinking about flyers? There's been years we send out 30,000 flyers. There's been years that we send out 10,000 flyers, you know, because you want to make sure that you you can cap capitalize on these. You know, otherwise, you're just wasting money. So in, in my case, I need 185 customers. How would you how big of an area would you target? I think you may be surprised, especially in the spring rush of how many people are just like, yes, yeah, sign me up. Um, how would I know? That I'm like underselling myself. I'm telling you, you will make 10x what the other marketing strategies. All right. So you said that you, right. you're running three trucks right now. You've been in business for two years. So yep. uh, so what can I help you help you out with to like get to like the next level? Or yeah, what 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 questions do you have for me? So, okay, so here's the thing. I'm at $25,000 in revenue a month. This is only recurring. I'm not talking about cleanups. I'm not talking about you know, landscaping. We do some solid installation and such. The goal for this business is uh, to get it to $50,000 a month in revenue um, and to put it in maintenance mode so I can go work on bigger businesses, uh, either e-commerce or like any, any type of product or service business that's more scalable. It doesn't have so much infrastructure behind it. <clears throat> So the question is, I want to get to 50,000 a month and monthly recurring revenue. I need, I need to do a couple of things, get more clients and raise my prices on some of my clients. About two or three months ago, I've discounted about 20 to 30% of my uh, monthly, monthly rates, just specifically to increase my signup rate. Currently my signup rates at 30, 30%. So and last year, what worked for me was advertising on Facebook, Google ads, and uh, uh, Google local service ads. Local service ads, I recently turned them on about like seven months ago. And those have been working really well, really profitable, extremely good. I get, I think, about one sign up a day on those. But my, I need to be able to double the business uh, before the before the middle of this year. I want to double. <clears throat> double the revenue, monthly recurring, not necessarily employees or trucks monthly recurring revenue and then have it all could be recurring because I don't like one time work because it's a lot of, it's a lot of management. I remember you were, there was a video you had said like, you know, how do you uh, grow your business? There was like Facebook groups, this, this, that. And Oh, another thing, my goal is to create route density, <clears throat> route density. I mean, where I'm in Sacramento, it's, a, it's about a million people here. So the maximum we go out is like about 30 minutes. That's the furthest property we'll take. But the ideal uh, scenario is where we have properties in one area and it's all about, it's really one and it's really close knit together. And that way, you know, the, the crew can do more properties per day. <clears throat> and now will actually help grow the revenue too much quicker. You probably tested flyers more than me. Our spring rush starts in February, in the middle of February. <clears throat> if you look at Google search volume, I looked at Google search, I have a Google ads account. And it pops off about middle of February, March, definitely. And it just pops up and goes until I think like June. How should I be thinking about flyers? Because beforehand I did flyers throughout the year, like in the winter time, the, the conversion rate was terrible. Yeah, we have found that like when we send out flyers any time outside of the spring rush, like we don't get the return back like we normally do. So mm -hmm. I would strongly recommend that. Um, it's good that you're doing your research on like when the biggest volume is. I would start to uh, figure out a budget, figure out how many um, like flyers you want to send out. What we have found and what the average is, is like one to 3% convert uh, based on like the amount of, of flyers that go out. You mean like respond back or turn into customers? Um, res uh, turn into customers. If it's, if it's done right at the right time and it's like, and you're getting into like somewhat of a newer market, right? If you're hitting the same houses or the same location where they already see your trucks and stuff like that, you, you, you're probably going to be closer to like 1%, maybe even a half percent conversion to an actual customer. So, um, one to 3% is about the average that we see. And mm -hmm. so you can kind of do the math of like, Hey, how many customers do I need? For an annual customer, for us, it's like $2,000. Each customer's $2,000. So if you wherever you want to get to your mark, you could just kind of work backwards and figure out how many flyers that you need to actually send out. Also, if you're sending out the flyers to like local markets that you have been doing for the last two years, again, just take into account, be a little bit more conservative, maybe just run out like a half percent. So for example, if you send out a hundred flyers in the spring rush, at 1%, you will get, should get one recurring customer, like to sign up. You may get three calls, 
but one will convert or should convert. It becomes just kind of like a numbers game. And so um, at a half percent, if you're doing like, you know, neighborhoods that you are already in and stuff, you may have to send out 200 flyers to get one customer, right? But now you can start to do the math on that. Um, that's for like EDDM. And then I would definitely time it right. So you said February 1st, 15th is the your start. I would um, like, there's been years we send out 30,000 flyers. There's been years that we send out 10,000 flyers. It'll just kind of flex or fluctuate based on like how many flyers you need to send out. But definitely don't send out, let's just say, you, hey, we're going to send out 10,000 this year. I wouldn't send them all out at once because you're going to get slammed with calls. So you want to stagger them, maybe do like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, send like 500 out each day for the next six weeks, you know, um, that'll help stagger the amount of volume that comes in. Um, you know, cause you want to make sure that you, you can cap capitalize on these phone calls that are, that are calling you. Otherwise you're just wasting money. Um, mm -hmm. you know, if you, if you get this really ambitious goal, let's send out 25,000 flyers this year. And then you can't, you can't like the call, like literally we'll be on the phone and there'll be three calls that come in that we miss. And it's like, it's crazy, you know, when you do that yeah. type of volume. So just be prepared for that. So in, the, in my case, I need 185 customers. How would you, how big of an area would you target? Yeah. As far as that question goes, I would focus on the closest homes first. And when you run out, you run out. Like, let's say, for example, you're going to do 10,000 flyers drop a pin where your like setup is or your shop area where the load and unload is and like do like the neighborhood right across the street and then the one right down the street and then just work your way out. And then once you run out of your flyers per se, or your target neighborhoods that you want, like that, that just be, let that be the cutoff because that's, what's going to make you the most money is the closest, the ones that you have to drive 25, 30 minutes out. They'll those be the last ones you send the flyers to. And if you don't get to them this year, that's okay. Um, I have a question. So you say you only do, uh, what, where are you located? Sacramento, California. Okay. So you're in California. So it's fairly pretty warm out there. Why do you only do bi-weekly mowing? Why not shift to weekly? Or do <clears> Okay. Or so an average lawn, uh, average property size is about 3000 square feet, right? Three to three. Like these, I love cookie cutter homes. They're great. Great for guys. Great for profit. Their average, their, our average on them is like $130 a month. Front and back weeds, uh, what well, I think it's like 140 with bushes or 145, but 130. When you start asking for weekly, it jumps up to 210. <clears throat> Every, most of these people have sticker shock. Like out of 100, I have 180 something clients, 85 clients now. Maybe like three of them have weekly service. I mean, we get we get price shock too. So like for example, like we only do customers that have weekly mowing and that have weed control services. Like we don't even like even if they just wanted weekly, we'd be like. No, you need to have our weed control service. So weed control um, on the lawn or on the off outside of the lawn? On the lawn. On the lawn. I'm I'm just I'm just challenging your thought like in a in a good positive way of like, hey, so for example, you have you said you need 185 new customers at a bi-weekly rate. Mm -hmm. What if instead of doing just bi-weekly, you somewhat start to for and, and maybe you grandfather those your existing customers in since you said only a handful of them have weekly, but what if moving forward, you, you maybe tested it for uh, 15 days in the spring rush and say, Hey, we're only accepting weekly customers. See how many actually convert. Um, I think you may be surprised, especially in the spring rush of how many people are just like, yes, yeah, sign me up. Um, the other thing, if you do that or, um, or, or maybe try to push it or upsell of like educating them, like why weekly is better. If you wait two weeks in between each cut, the grass can grow, especially you're fertilizing them, right? Some of them, if you let it grow too much and you cut it off, taking that much growth off can actually damage the plant and the root system of, of the grass. And so when you start to educate them, you may be able to start to upsell them, you know, for your office side or whatever. Um, I, I'm yeah. just like, that might be a more of an easier alternative if you want to grow like if you, it sounds like your goal is to grow monthly revenue recurring right yeah only so i only care about monthly you're recurring you're revenue. going to double your bi-weekly mowing customers but if you just focused on maybe the customers that you do have upselling or increasing their their recurring packages um, another alternative might be, you said that you go to your fertilizing and weed control customers twice a year. 
No, sorry. Uh, so the mowing, I put, this is the bundle that we just do. It's one bundle, one product, one customer. The bundle is mowing, uh, and we put fertilizer down twice a year. It's a fertilizer, and then the second time of the year, it's a weed prevents or it's a pre emergent mixed with the fertilizer. Gotcha. Okay. So you're selling it to these customers at a monthly package, or are you doing it down to the week? Monthly. It's like, hey, uh, I live in one, two, three. Uh, Salisbury. Okay, sir. Let me pull it up. Measure it. It's one thirty a month. Okay, great. Let's do one thirty a month. And this is what you get for one thirty a month. You get, you know, we blow the weeds out, the blow the leaves out. We spray your weeds on your bark. We mow your lawn. <clears throat> if you know, if if the package includes bushes, we do the bushes. If the packages include bushes, and that's really the only two packages: bushes, with bushes or without bushes. Okay. It is bi weekly. Got it. Got it. Yeah, I I just like. I think uh, to be honest, like Sacramento, California, I just feel like that. I don't know. I'm, I'm maybe uneducated on the, on the, but I feel like to me, that's pretty cheap. 130 bucks a month. You take care of like that. So there's always going to be, I think people that have like that price shock, but I would say don't sell yourself short on like standing your ground and be like, Hey, we provide a good quality of service. You know, if it's yeah. 200 bucks a month, it's, we're going to, we're better really? than, than the other ones. And, and here's the value that we can bring you, right? Like, our crews are going to tell you if you have maybe a disease in your lawn or if you need your bushes trimmed, like we're not just going to just show up and leave. We're going to, we're going to care for your lawn and just structuring yeah. it in a way that you're bringing them good value. Um, you know, whether your lawn care service was a thousand bucks a month or $10 a month, there's always going to be people that are going to be like, Oh, it's the price. I can't, it can't afford it. Right. You know, but yeah. Um, How would I know that I'm like underselling myself? I think it comes with volume. Like you need the volume, so obviously you're going to send out flyers this spring, well, right? You're, have, you're we're selling about we're signing about one person a day right now. Um, I wouldn't get that's actually pretty good in in Fi January February. That's better yeah, than what like, we're doing. Like, yeah, one person a day, one person a business day. That's pretty good. Like especially in January February where the demand's pretty low. Like I, uh -huh. you know, um, I know you're in Sacramento, so it's probably somewhat decently warm. But like when the grass starts to come out of dormancy and the yeah, growth not yet comes. Okay. That's when you want to track that. And I would break this down each week. What we failed to do last year is we waited too long um, to track our close ratio. I would track it every week, every single week. How many customers asked for an estimate? How many okay. accepted, right? Of like yeah. ones that we actually emailed and said, yeah, we can, we can do it. Here's the package. And how many of those signed up? If you wait a month, that's going to take too long. And you're going to lose a lot of that top line uh, growth off. What we what we did last year is we raised our prices too high. And by the end of the spring rush, we looked back and we we're like, oh my goodness, our close ratio was like 15, 20%. It was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. We're like, we lost out on so much revenue because we waited to track that. But I would definitely track that close ratio in the spring rush. That that's when you really kind of want to dive into that. Um, I wouldn't get too hung up if I mean one one customer a day is pretty good, like these days. Um, obviously spring rush, that's going to, you may, you, there's days where we'll get eight or 10 new customers in the springtime in one day. And so that's when you really want to track it. But, um, yeah, you're going to be in growth mode. If you want to add 185 customers, um, I would say if you're around like a 50 to 70% close ratio, I think that's a good, a good ratio to be around right now. We're at 30, I think that's okay. We're at 38% right now in our business. 30%. Yeah. Demands low. I have to manually manually calculate it. it's a stupid jobber mm -hmm. you know it's one of the supposedly most advanced softwares but it doesn't even give you a close ratio which just pisses me off yeah i i'm not familiar with jobber but uh but yeah if you need to do it manually like that i would def track it every single week and you know if if you in the first like let's say march 1st hits and you've got a 35 you still have a 35 percent close ratio you either need to a lower price but lower, lower your prices, which I don't think that's the case. If you're in Sacramento, like 130 bucks a month for lawn care services, that doesn't sound bad at all, but like, we don't, we don't do it monthly. We, we charge per service. So in the summertime in July, like we're hitting their card every time we're there and we're there four times a month and at 50 bucks a, a cut, right? Like they're paying that's 200 bucks plus a weed control treatment that they might get which is like 70 bucks. There's months where they're paying $270 in July. So, I mean, but my weekly my weekly price for a weekly service starts at 220 per month. I I don't think that's bad. I don't think that's like too too overpriced. 
like the small cookie cutter lawns are like one the, the lowest price for weekly I have is like 190 or 200. It's so yeah. hilarious. And then sometimes I remember think like last year I was passing out flyers and I'd hear these ladies like nice neighborhoods. Houses are a million dollars, like eight. They're cookie cutter houses, but they're like 800, 900,000. 30 dollars a month. He comes and he comes weekly. 40 dollars a month. Yeah. Oh, like it's like blows my mind. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's always going to be that type of, you know, company that that charges that. But yeah, I, I think I think just providing good value, um, you know, having a good website, having bright uniform, uh, having logo trucks like that's all stuff that. Uh, yeah, I know. don't have the logo trucks yet. Just have the F-150s, the white ones. They're not old or anything like 2012, 2016. Mm-hmm. Um, how will that impact my uh, sales? If once I start, I'm going to logo right now. Oh, I if there's anything, I would logo the trucks before you send out any flyers. Seriously, that okay. will that will number one. I mean, so for us, it's typically about four hundred to six hundred dollars a truck, and that's to put the website and the phone number and the logo on both sides of the truck. Mm-hmm. And like we're not doing wraps or anything, <laughs> um, but that will last you if it's a good vinyl wrap. You know, four or five years. And it'll be around every spring, all summer. It's just a moving billboard. Every stop sign, every stoplight, like people are seeing that. And it's not, I'm telling you, you will make, the return that you'll make is like 10x what the other marketing strategies. Like if you put signs out, flyers out, it's like, it's 10x because it's a one-time $500 fee. Hey guys, wanted to take a quick second here. So I don't ask or promote anything on this channel or sell anything directly to you guys. I provide this value completely free to you and hopefully it helps grow and achieve greater success in your business. But what I wanted to ask uh, from you is if you could click that subscribe button and share this video with someone, an entrepreneur in the lawn care industry that you feel could benefit from this content. More importantly, it may change someone's future. We'll see you guys here then.